What's up, everybody? Welcome to Planet Peppy. Uh, if I'm gonna do this Nirvana Chronicle thing, I'm gonna do it right. Um, so let's, I'm gonna kind of start from the outside and work my way in because there's a lot of things about this band I think that, that need to be addressed. So again, I'm gonna start with like the outer orbit and then get to the core, which is of course Kurt Cobain. Uh, but let's, th let's start talking about uh, Pat Smear, uh, who was uh, a traveling, uh, Voc or backup vocalist and lead guitar or not lead guitar I'm just saying like that like a a rhythm guitarist for Nirvana that that Kurt Cobain you know wanted to be in in his band uh, and, they, and he toured with him I think once or twice for about a year year and a half and he he really rounded out the sound even Kurt I think in interviews was saying how like you know it takes some pressure off me because even though Kurt was like 26 27 at such a young age he just mentally kind of couldn't just do it all anymore and like you know he, he really needed someone to you know to, to play rhythm guitar and you know kind of add some st stability to the band uh in terms of like you know you know just music production in general and he even Kurt always said nirvana was meant to be a four piece and i think he really wanted pat smear to be the fourth member of the band i think that that was an evolving thing and unfortunately kurt just couldn't stick around he had to go um it's it's a tragedy you know how he chose to go out the way he did but i think for that last year or so and again pat i, I think he pat smear really really helped that band in a lot of ways kind of push through some some, some things and, and you know really solidify them uh in ways that i'll maybe get into more specifically not so much him but it's, it involves some other videos I, pl I plan to, to do about this Nirvana saga um, or this Chronicle. Uh, but this is this is part two. Pat Smear definitely kind of, he was even quiet. Like, I feel like even when he became like the, the unofficial fourth member, there wasn't a lot of fuss about it. I feel like he really just kind of stayed in the shadows. You know, like he kind of was cool with that. He was like, hey, I'll just help out any way I can. He's a great musician, by the way. He's still going. Uh, he's with the Foo Fighters, with Dave Grohl. I don't, I think he was their lead guitarist at some point. I don't know if he still is, but they're great. Um, and also too, um, he, he, he had a band called The Germs, I think, which I've listened to a couple of their songs over the years and, the, and they're, they're really good in their own right. So I think Kurt, really saw something in him. Um, and, you know, for that last year and a half, especially when things got rocky with, you know, Kurt's drug addiction and, you know, like drama, and maybe I'll leave it at that for now. Um, I think I think Pat Smear really kind of came on and, and really made that band, not great because they were great before Pat Smear, they didn't need him or anything per se. Like, they, it's not like he was their savior, but like, he was kind of this like unofficial fourth member that um, I think was a really good selection by Kurt. So, I, I think he's a great musician and uh, he added a lot to Nirvana um, behind the scenes and I think he, he's got good vision. So uh, again, this is just part two. I'm probably gonna be going down the line of, of all these artists bef again before we get to the meat of this. But, uh, you know, Pat Smear did, did a lot of great things for Nirvana. I think he helped put on great shows, you know, with Kurt, Chris Novoselic and, you know, Dave Grohl and working with Geffen Records. So. Uh, much, much shout out to him. Not that he needs my respect, but he's got it. So, all right, Planet Peppy, uh, part three coming soon. Star Storm Club. All right, take care. Bye.